Hey everyone, Nathan here, Absurd Being. All right, so Watsuji Tetsuro Ethics. This is uh, part two. So we're going to move into part two today. The fundamental structure of human existence. This part contains five chapters. We'll look at the first three today. Three uh, Chapters three, four, and five. And um, the last two chapters we'll look at actually two videos later i've got another video coming in the middle which is going to deal with something a little bit different but we'll talk about that when we get there um, so the fundamental structure of human existence today's video there is a little bit of repetition um, you find it with these kinds of philosophy texts there is always um, revision uh, but the revision kind of clarifies the ideas and, and with each revision, there is always a bit of extension, an extension of the ideas. So it's just the way that these, uh, these books, that the philosophers seem to write these books. And it's a good way to, to go through them as well. It, it really, I, I find it anyway, it helps clarify things and always makes things um, easier to understand. The more, the more you go over them, the more you attack them from kind of different positions attack these ideas from different perspectives, you get a, a fuller, richer understanding of them. So I'll, I'll try not to belabor the revisions, but um, but yeah, just, just be aware of that. So chapter three, our first port of call today is the everyday fact as a starting point. So the everyday fact that Wasuji is talking about here that we are going to be starting from is betweenness. That, that idea in betweenness, we called it before. He starts just calling it betweenness from here. Um, and this that, that idea, just the, the concept that we are always with other people, that fundamentally defines who we are, this idea of being together, being with others in a whole, in a community. And the example we talked about in the last video was the writer an activity we typically think of as highly individualistic something you can do entirely alone but just by the fact that you are writing it implies you're writing for someone and or using language developed by other people over um over a, an extended period of time so immediately just the act of writing thrusts you into the middle of a community it makes it makes your existence uh, dependent on the whole the community uh, in, in, in a in a really fundamental way and we also talked about the way this implies a reciprocal determination so my acts are determined by other people um, in the same way that their acts are determined by me and keeping the idea of the, the writer in mind, keeping that analogy going, a writer writes for a reader. We talked about that. But the reader reads according to what or how the writer has written. So there is no writer without a reader, but there's no reader without a writer either. Um, and that just reinforces this idea of betweenness, this interconnectedness that is fundamental to human existence. Um, but what this means is that the relations that arise in, in betweenness are constructed in the activity of in betweenness. So this is leading to a bit of a problem. There's, like I said, there's the reader writes, there's no reader without a writer, but no writer without a reader. Um, so which comes first? We're back to that, that problem of the chicken and the egg. How can there be a reader if there's no writer? And how can there be a writer if there's no reader? And there's, no, there's no, not even any relationship between them prior to this in-betweenness. So there's no writer, there's no reader, there's no relationship prior to the in-betweenness. But that's what the in-betweenness is. It's that connection between these things that relation. This is what, um, this is how Watsuji defines betweenness in this section. 
we always act with a certain capacity, and this capacity is prescribed by something whole. Further, this whole is the relationship we construct by means of possessing a certain capacity. Now you'll note that that definition is, or description, is circular, right? <clears throat> we act with a certain capacity prescribed by the whole, but the whole is a relationship we construct by means of a certain capacity. So there's a circularity there. And this is our contradiction. We talked about this in the last video as well. Uh, betweenness is constituted among individuals, but individuals are determined by the whole. And this is, in the last video, we talked about this in connection with Ningen, that idea of, of the human being. Individuals are basically different from society and yet dissolve themselves into society. So uh, we talked about, we called it, I called it the chicken and the egg problem back there as well. Um, and essentially the rest of this part is working to answer this contradiction, to, to make some sense of this problem. And we'll start that in the next section, in the next part, chapter four, uh, which is individual moments making up human existence. So this chapter is looking to understand how it is that we can be individuals, what it means to be an individual. And the first way that Watsuji looks at this is as physical bodies, as physical organisms. We can, well, we can think of ourselves as individuals in terms of our physical bodies. We are separate physical things. Um, and although this is true, we've kind of already looked at how this, our daily lives, show that this is a misconception. This idea that just because we are separate physical entities, we are originally, primarily separate, doesn't stack up. Everything we do as these physical entities is bound up with every other physical entity out there. We're always... Um, we're determined in our separateness by that togetherness, by that in-betweenness. Um, so this leads Watsuji to say that our bodies are actually subjective before they are objective physical objects. So our bodies are subjective. Now this this really... If you've read Sartre in particular, you'll, you'll be thinking of him right about now, I think, who talked about the body as um, being for itself. <clears throat> the, the way that our bodies are um, originally not collections of organs and limbs and muscles and whatever, but they're originally the, the means by which we interact. They are, they are they're, they're not instruments we control. They are fundamentally, um, we surpass them as physical objects, originally, primordially. So first and foremost, they are subjective, is the word that Watsuji uses. <clears throat> and so the subjectivity, this idea that the body is body as subject, we could say, instead of object. The idea of the, the, the body as subject expresses itself in betweenness, in our relations with others. And he talks about a kind of attraction that exists between, between people. Um, one example being that of a mother and her baby. There is a kind of bond there between the two. Now, it's, not, it's obviously not a physical bond. It's not like gravity. But, well, it, it's, not, it's, not, uh, as, it's not objective in the same way that gravity is, but it is still a gravity-like bond. It's not necessary. It doesn't, it doesn't exert itself independent of your desires or will or subjectivity, but it's still there 
doesn't mean it lasts forever, but it doesn't mean it has to be there, but it, it can be, and it often is. And that connection is just because it's not objective, just because it's not forced on us by you know some kind of impartial law of nature, uh, doesn't mean that it's not real. That's kind of what Watsuji is getting at here. So this connection that exists between people, between a mother and a baby, it's just as real as, as gravity, even though it's not as objective, even though it's not objective like gravity. <clears throat> uh, and so separate, two separate bodies bound together by this, this force of attraction. Which um, which transcends the 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 physical organisms that uh, we typically reduce human beings to, and he says even bodily sensations are shared. Uh, and I think we've talked about this already as well, maybe in the in the first video or in the the last one, uh, remarking on the heat. Or when we when we talk about the heat to some with someone else. Uh, and we can kind of share our experiences of the heat, or, or you know, sympathise with each other if 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 it's if it's if it's really hot, um, and we can understand what the other person's saying about the heat. All of this is impossible if we were truly unable to share our sensations. So even though. Um, you have your subjective experience of the weather, which I, I, I don't have and I can't have, I'm not privy to. Um, there is nevertheless a sense of, of us experiencing the same thing. And it's that, it's only because we have that shared sense that we're able to even talk about it meaningfully with each other. So if someone grimaces in the cold, then it's not like I have no idea what they're what's going on. Why are they grimacing? What there is no it's not like there's no context for me to understand that. Rather, they have conveyed something meaningful to me. They've conveyed the idea that it's cold outside. That if I go outside, I'm going to feel that same cold. This is only possible because we share the cold, because we have that. A fundamental um, communal experience underneath the separate subjective experiences that we might have. There is something bringing us together, something we we have in common, and it's that which which is this betweenness, and it's that which is more fundamental than the separate subjective experiences because it's what makes those. It's what those are built on top of. Those come afterwards. The, the original experience itself is, is first one that can be shared. It's something we can have in common with others. And that, that's what betweenness is. So there's an objection here, and we kind of touched on it already, that there's no physical connection between people, between bodies. Um, so we're talking about a kind of this, this notion of in-betweenness as a connection, but it's not, it's not really a connection. It's kind of because it's not physical. That's the objection. But for Watsuji, this assumes that the body is physical first and foremost. We've already said the body is not physical originally. It's subjective. What's important here is what is primary for us in our lives as they are lived. Right? We're not we're not interested in kind of an abstract a philosophical abstraction. Lives what are people are these kind of independent bodies and we can break it down like that's a very third person way of thinking about it which is very removed from our actual experience as human beings which is what we're trying to understand, right? trying to understand human existence, not um, 
and it's not that it's it's invalid to approach it from this third person perspective but it's it's that that is not our original experience that doesn't capture or it, it it gets to an aspect of human existence but one that is deliberately uh excluding this uh, this other more primate more primary more originary uh, mode of existence which is the way that we we actually live our lives the way that we actually exist as human beings what's important then is is what's original for us and that is our lives as they're lived so we don't actually experience ourselves or other people as physical bodies first first we understand them we see them we see ourselves as subjects and so that and that's all what suji is saying is originally primordially we are subjects our bodies even are subjective not objects not physical things and this is kind of the uh, a blind spot in the scientific or materialist mindset it starts from this notion that the physical is real anything that's true must be physical must reduce to the physical and if it doesn't then um then it's not real so that's an, it's some kind of illusion or it, it's a fiction and this is well, like I say, it just misses a core part of what it is to be a human being, what it is to exist for us. It's, it's only when you take this phenomenological approach and look at um, how it is that we exist, how it is that we experience these things, what's going on with that, then you capture this, this, um, this aspect of our lives and realize that it, it's more originary it's it's our primary mode of engagement is um a, a, is engagement as subjects not as physical lumps of matter and then again well not again but what well, is kind of again i say i feel like i say this in, in half the videos that i make this doesn't mean kind of a mystical magical non-physical etheric body or energy or any of that nonsense it just means um it's taking experience seriously taking subject of experience seriously we're not we're not postulating any kind of metaphysical substances or we're not adding any we're not we're not postulating anything in that direction all we're saying is experience is valid and it's and our experience tells us something about what it is to be human beings we don't need to drift into the the metaphysical territory of um you know spirits or souls or any of that kind of stuff non-physical substances we, we're not we don't need to go anywhere near any of that stuff here so it's best to think of this as purely phenomenological in approach um yeah so for watsuji then the mind and the body actually are not even separate there is no mind body problem because like i said the body is primarily subjective so we're just kind of bypassing this problem when we approach the human being from this phenomenological perspective and see that now, I don't treat my body like a collection of organs. I don't treat other people's bodies as collections of organs. I can do that if I'm a doctor that maybe maybe that's what I do, but that is still secondary. It's derivative. It's a derivative mode of engagement. The original one is to see the body as a subject. So you greet the person. They come in and, and you sit them down and you talk to them about what their symptoms are. Uh, and, and this is all treating that body as a subject, not as a lump of matter, which you can dissect and reduce everything to, right? So that's, prim that's primary. He even goes, he even says that um, the movement of the mind involves the movement of the body. In this way, this, this, is, this is how deeply 
uh, interconnected these two these these two things that we think are separate we think of as separate this is how deeply interconnected they are the mind and the body the move the, the, the mind moves the body follows the body moves the mind follows the two are so deeply intertwined that there is no separation the mind is the body there is no mind body problem because well from a phenomenological perspective because we the body just is the mind the mind the body is first and foremost subjective um, so okay so that's I think I've, I've drilled that point home as strongly as I can mind and body are not separate originally primordially bodies are subjective before they are physical objects and the other way that we can think about human beings as individuals is through our um i, I think it's what you doesn't use this word but through our psychic activity through our mental activity and i hesitate to use the word because it, it's such a loaded term but consciousness our awareness of ourselves so we can think about ourselves as, as minds separate from other minds but as with bodies we're not concerned with abstract definitions but with lived experiences that's what Watsuji is focusing on here that's remember our starting point is um, everyday lived experience which is betweenness so intentionality towards someone is already a being determined by them we talked about that with reciprocal determination um, so far as betweenness oriented existences are concerned each consciousness interpenetrates the other there is no clear dividing line because in our engagement in our everyday dealings with other people um, they are, are determined by me in, in exactly the same way that I and my actions and my thoughts are determined by them there is this reciprocality going on all the time such that we can think of ourselves as these isolated minds but that that is kind of a, it's an abstract way of thinking about things because really there's this constant um interchange there's this constant interplay of ideas and um opinions and viewpoints and perspectives that, that are all going into not not uh, not affecting us superficially but they're going into shaping who we are and who the other person is so that they're, they're affecting us they're affecting us and the other person in our and their very essence and that's why this intentionality is it's that's why it's abstract to think of two separate minds that are that are fundamentally removed from each other and 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 uh, only superficially connected right you can think of us that way but that is a secondary abstracted way of thinking about things originally we are intertwined inseparable from others so as, as Watsuji says each consciousness interpenetrates the other and a good example for this is the way that emotions in particular can be shared very easily so you, you pick up on someone else's emotions through physical cues or whatever body language facial expressions but that affects your emotions right so it's very this is the whole point of watching movies and, and tv programs we get we get caught up in the drama you know it's not happening to me literally physically but it can still move me it can make the things the experiences of other people and they're not even real they're fake but those experiences can still move me to happiness to joy or to sadness or to fear um, and and that's because 
fundamentally, originally, there is this connection. There is this uh, interpenetration. It's a good word for this. Interpenetration of consciousnesses. Uh, and even our intentionality towards things betrays this, this original connection of betweenness. So our intentionality towards things like fashion, food, housing, all of these kinds of things refer to a wider community. You know, we're not, I don't act towards clothing the way I would act if I hadn't been influenced by the community around me. Perhaps I like certain clothes because other people wear them because I see them a lot. Or perhaps I like the opposite kinds of clothing. But again, that, that's because I've been surrounded by people wearing this kind of clothing. So my, my reaction against it, my, in a sense I'm rebelling against it, that wouldn't be possible without that community first. Um, so even, even our intentionality towards things betrays this deeper betweenness. And, uh, and we've talked about bodily sensations as well, as well but again, uh, the, the kind of bodily sensations from a, a mental perspective. So he, he talks about shallow here and, uh, and argues against shallow that our bodily sensations don't reduce us to separate entities. They don't yield an independent mind or I for Watsuji. Our sensations we've already seen are shared, they're communal. And the example he gives here is talking about sugar, the sweetness of sugar. So your, your experience, your subjective experience of sugar is your own, which I, I don't have access to, but it's built on a, a communal response to sugar. We all have we all understand what sugar is and we understand that it's sweet so if someone tastes sugar and says it's bitter watsuji says take that person to the hospital something's wrong you know that why because there is this deeper foundation of um, communality is that a word there's a deeper foundation of um betweenness which we share which which all of these Independent experiences are built on top of. Um, and even our, our the, the most personal conscious acts we can imagine ourselves as center. If, if we reduce ourselves to a center of conscious activity, even that through all of this, these um, intentional intentionality based experiences we've talked about they're always determined by others just as much as other people's um, conscious acts are determined by by me that reciprocal determination so there's just there is no aspect of the individual as a mind as a self as a consciousness which is untouched untouchable by the community, which is unaffected by this in-betweenness. And so what we see is that modern Western philosophy in particular starts from individuality, starts from the ego, consciousness, mind, and that creates the problem of others. But for Watsuji, who disagrees with this as a starting point, who argues that we are not originally these isolated atomistic units, whether it be as a body, whether it be as, um, as a mind, he avoids this problem. There is no problem of, of others because the others are included in us right from the beginning. So that is... Um, his approach to this to individuality. So then, what is in the individual? How does the individual arise? Well, in order for the individual to appear, 
and everything that we've talked about between this is is primary is foundational so in order for the individual to appear we've already hinted at it we have to think about the the person in the abstract we have to abstract out the the body or the mind from this from its original state we have to think abs we have to think the the person the body or the mind abstractly in other words the individual is the negation of communal characteristics and this is really the 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 conclusion of this section or of this of this chapter the independence of the individual is a mode of the deficiency of community and this is this is a fantastic insight i think this is this is really this was worth the the price of admission to reading the chapter um what the individual is an individual only in the sense that it negates the whole it negates the community uh, and this this is going to be extremely an extremely important point when we go on to um, the next chapter and the video two videos from now uh, so just note though at this point this it doesn't mean that the individual is not actually independent is not actually separate or that that, that this individuality is somehow false even though an individual is not individualistic in essence nonetheless she still stands in opposition to society precisely as an individual so even though we've defined individuality as a negation of this of community of of in betweenness uh, it doesn't mean it's not real it doesn't mean it's not genuine individuality is is a real um aspect of human existence but it's it's predicated on this negation uh, and that is brilliant i think and and you'll see you'll see why it's so brilliant when we get to when we go through the next couple of chapters but the next chapter is the element of the whole in a human being so in the last chapter we looked at how it was human beings can be considered individuals um, and the conclusion there was we're individuals as negation as a negation of the community now we're looking at the other side of of ningen the other side of, of what it is to be a human being how it is we can be um how it is human beings can exist in as a single whole how it is that individual can be i used to use the word but kind of kind of absorbed completely into this this um into the community so what is this whole aspect of human existence just trying to understand how that comes about so the, he, at the beginning watsuji discusses three ways that we might approach this that we might answer that question the first is family so a family is a unit on its own it's more than the sum of its members so it has some kind of existence over and above the individuals who make it up but ultimately it doesn't exist independently of them it doesn't exist on its own enough for what to do to call this to to be um for what to do to consider this a way that human beings can can exist as as a whole as a a community over and above prior to their being individuals so it's not cohesive enough for watsuji then he looks at a company and says this is more like an individual person we granted um legal status as a person right um so it has that kind of sense of being 
something on its own, something that exists um, in and of itself. However, even a company, he says, is, is ultimately more like an accumulation of capital. And the individuals who make up the company are still really separate. They come together, you know, for their for stockholder meetings or whatever, for AGMs, um, but but still fundamentally, they're separate, and that that's the real um, locus of of the the group is in the individuals. So again, it's not it doesn't really fulfil that. That what what Watsuji is looking for, how it is that human beings can be considered wholes. And then he talks about Shella. Shella again talks about Shella's total person. But this really, he says, only makes sense as God, kind of um, Christian conception of God, and Watsuji rejects that notion. So this is is kind of it, it, this is a dead end as well. None of those um, three ways get us to a, a full understanding of, of the wholeness that makes up human existence, that, that we're trying to capture anyway here. So what's Uji's suggestion then? The most important thing is to investigate in what way the many individual persons actually constitute the whole. The only way to solve this problem is to be found in the negation of the independence of the individual person. And that is fantastic. That's a brilliant analysis of this, I think. We can try and piece together individuals and, and create a broader community, a, a, a whole. But if, if, we, if we take that approach this kind of additive approach, that's all we end up doing. We're always just, we're starting with the individuals and we never get away from the individuals. That's always the fundamental unit. So trying to kind of throw individuals together in, in various ways always results in a mere collection of individuals, not this fundamental wholeness that Watsuji is looking for, which can... Um, really stand over and above the individuals themselves and to which the individuals can belong, not as individuals, but as, as a complete um, whole. And the way that we can do this, the only way we can do this, is not by starting from individuals, but by negating the individual. So when we, when we take these individuals, like we're starting from individuals, but it's the negation of the individual. When the individual negates him or herself as an individual, that's when you get the possibility for true community, for a true wholeness here, a, a true sense in which human beings can be considered not as individual units, but as a whole. So it's a phenomenological insight again. It's something that, and it's an action. That's important as well. It's something that we, that people have to do in order for there to be a whole. There has to be a negation of that individual, um, individualistic tendency. When that happens, then you create a whole. It's not something that's kind of, that can be pieced together. Rather, the, the, the key is in negation. Um, and that's what community is. That's kind of how Watsuji sees community. It's different things becoming the same. So if you focus on the individual first, or if you focus on the whole, the thing that you want to create first, then you'll never get to the community because you'll always be stuck with this noun, this thing, trying to turn this thing into something different. And, and 
that won't work because the thing is is primarily that thing. If you start with individuals, throw them together, you're just left with a collection of individuals. If you start with a whole, then you've got a whole, but there there's nothing in it, and you can't get anything into it without with you know without like I said, just just adding separate things, which doesn't get you, which 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 robs you of the whole, eliminates the whole, and reduces it to a collection of separate things. What's important is that this is an action. It's a verb. The negation is the key here. Starting with the nouns, individuals, or the whole that you want to create, leaves you without community. It's only when you include a verb, an action, that's when you can get to community. Um, and an exact parallel with the way the individual was, the, the way the individual came about. The individual is an action again, negation of that fundamental betweenness. Negation of community gives you the individual, and negation of the individual gives you the community. Uh, but this this is still our contradiction. We haven't we haven't overcome that contradiction of how the individual becomes the community, um, how the individual becomes a community, which is nothing more than a collection of individuals. We've kind of made some inroads here. We, maybe you can see the direction we're, we're going in, but we haven't fully solved it yet. We've still kind of got this problem of what comes first, though. Is it the individual that comes first, negate the individual and become a community? Or is it the community that comes first, between this, negate the community and you get the individual? There's still this kind of chicken and egg paradox. We haven't solved that yet. We're going to solve that two videos later. Um, but just a couple of points here then to, to, leave, to leave you with. First, this is, I think this is fantastic. I, this is a really brilliant use of negation, which is very Buddhist, but he's using negation in a way that is, I, that is not Buddhist, I think. B Buddhist negation tends to be, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later, kind of an absolute negation, absolute nothingness, emptiness, these kinds of, of words get get used um, but that's kind of elevating the the subject to the realm of metaphysics to what's really real here Watsuji is approaching this from the perspective of phenomenology the perspective of the individual the individual experience experience is primary experience lived everyday experience is what we are returning to. And this is purely phenomenology. So when he talks about this negation, it's what we do. It's an action that takes place. That puts us in the, in the real world, in the, the realm of the concrete, not some kind of metaphysical abstraction. We're not talking about the universe or what the universe does or whether the universe is absolute emptiness or whatever or nothingness or somethingness or it's got nothing to do with that. Negation is here for Watsuji a practical concrete activity of individuals. When we negate ourselves we can be we can create community. When we negate that community, we can we we create an individual. Beautiful. It's it's a it's just such a, a clever use of um, <clears throat> this this tool of negation that um, and and it's kind of a compromise I think between the Buddhist kind of metaphysics of negation and nothingness uh, and phenomenology and concrete practical lived experience and and it works so well and it, it explains so much i think it's such a powerful idea but and this is the but he uses this he leverages this 
idea now um, in the book and takes us on a tour of what I call metaphysical madness and um, and tries to kind of elevate the discussion. Uh, and that is what I'm going to talk about in the next video. I'm going to give a, a kind of a detailed critique of his um, metaphysical madness on this. So that's the next video. And then two videos later, we'll pick up the um, ethics again and, and finish up the last two chapters. So, yeah, let me stop talking about that here, I think. Um, and let's do a summary. So first we talked about the everyday fact. The everyday fact was in betweenness that um, that fundamental way we are primarily together with our, our together withness, uh, and this was characterised by what I think is is an important idea: reciprocal determination. But this did leave us with that kind of circular um, paradox. We act with a certain capacity determined by the whole, but the whole is constructed by our possessing a certain capacity to act. And it's that, it's that same paradox that we saw in Ningen, how the individual can be part of a whole when the whole is nothing more than a collection of individuals. Uh, then we looked at the individual in human existence, what it is to be an individual, and this cashed out as the negation of community. So to be an individual is to do something, is to negate the community. The community, that, that fundamental aspect of in-betweenness. And then we looked at the whole in human existence, the other side of that coin, and saw that this was... In an exact parallel, the negation of the individual. So the creation of the whole comes about through another act of negating, uh, this time negating the individual. This doesn't get us out of the paradox, but it gives us an opening that we didn't have before. And we'll capitalize on that. And we'll capitalize on that two videos later. So, like I said, the next video is going to um, investigate Watsuji's metaphysical madness. Um, it's not a very long section in the book. Like I, I, I mean, I've always said Watsuji is um, is 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 Buddhist influenced, but he always he walks a fine line between kind of going down the whole Buddhist route. And and um, kind of preserving a, a more secular stance, um, and he kind of he kind of makes that treads that path carefully. But um, <clears throat> and this is this is why he was never a part of the Kyoto School either, right? He was he was just just not fully in enough on the Buddhism to be a part of of uh, Nishida and all of his his kind of cohorts there. Um, and and the, the section in the book I'm talking about is like, it's not even a page, I think. It's less than a page. But I'm going to devote a whole video to it because it I think it's a, it's a good example of how this really good philosophy can be turned into, can be, can be, hijacked a little bit by kind of pseudo-religious metaphysical notions. But enough said. That's uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about that in the next video. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll catch you shortly.